Akno Hana is the best anime you've never watched. Airing in 2013, it got a lot of flack for its art direction and lack of plot resolution. Fortunately, there is a way to get some closure without having to break open the manga, and as far as the art direction, well, I think it's essential to what makes the series so special. If you're worried about spoilers, don't. My job is to try to convince you to give the series a chance and point you in the right direction about how to consume it. The show is made by the writer-director duo who brought you Mushishi, and a lot of the pacing and direction is kind of the same here. Both shows are methodical, borderline horrific at times, and drip with atmosphere. There's a lot of bold choices in both the screenwriting and the way things are cut and structured. These guys are also working on the new Uzumaki adaptation coming later this year, so if you're really excited for that, I'd really recommend giving Akno Hana a try first. A lot of you probably know I'm a huge Neon Genesis Evangelion fan, and if you like that band of freaks in the original Eva, I do think you'll like this series too. Saiki, Kasuka, and Nakamura, the main characters of the show, are pretty unlike anything else I've seen in anime, including Eva. And while it lacks a lot of the action, is fairly slow paced overall, you can't help but keep your eyes glued to the screen as you watch these weirdos unravel. The plot revolves around the self important protagonist, Kasuka. He's a loner who decides to stick to the back of the class, boasting to himself that he reads grim dark poetry. He's a pretentious little twat, and he's unlike a lot of protagonists. Mainly, writers try to front load you with either how cool the main character is or try to get you to pity them, but Casca is pretty unlikable for a large part of the beginning of the story, but I promise that if you stick through it, he'll come around. You do eventually start to feel bad for him, understand him, and even root for him by the end. The character does a complete 180 and has a really strong character arc overall. His transformation adds a lot of unexpected heart to the show, and I think it's totally worth it. While it's hard to engage with Kazuga at first, Nakamura, the antagonist, is absolutely the reason I stuck around as long as I did to give him a chance. She is absolutely spell-binding. In the pilot, Nakamura spies on Kasuka and finds him stealing his crush Psyche's gym clothes. Using this information, she begins to blackmail him and forces him to do all kinds of messed up shit. The dynamic between these two is the hook of the series. Nakamura is phenomenal. The show was originally shot in live action and rotoscoped after the fact. Basically, they drew over the live action film to give it this quasi-animation look. And Nakamura's character was actually played by two separate actresses, one for the body performance and the other one for the voice. And they come together seamlessly. <laughs> Nakamura's performance is unreal. Part of the appeal of Akko no Hana is to try and figure out how she ended up like this. She's borderline sociopathic, totally outrageous, in your face, and revels in filth. Every moment she's on screen, you wonder what she's going to do next and how she's going to ruin poor Kazuka's life. She's a puzzle, and when you begin to put the pieces together, she's the single most compelling and unique character of the show. I'd consider Psyche the third and last major character, and she's the girl Kazuka crushes on from afar. And while there is a lot to say about her, the less the better. She's a surprise that you should experience on your own. Might not seem like it at first, but yeah. So I think the character writing in Akonohana is great. Sure, a lot of it doesn't hold your hand, and the themes of Akonohana are fairly unique. The show examines pretension and being a faux edgelord and really captures a lot of what makes being a teenager relevant. It's very catcher in the rye, and I super dig that. As mentioned earlier, Akonohana is rotoscoped, and I think this is a large turnoff for anime fans getting into the show. But it really shouldn't be. It's well directed and actually really well executed for what it is. It's expensive to go out and shoot film and then take that back to draw over everything. You have to rehearse with the actors, acquire locations for shooting rights, hire a gaffer to light the scene, and a cinematographer to pull focus. After you're done with that, you still have to draw over everything. This wasn't a half measure. I think a lot of anime fans think it is. Most of the time, when people try to dunk on Akunohana, they also cite specific shots or sequences from an anime that uses rotoscoping to shortcut the complexity of animating playing music specifically. Things like Haruhi Suzumiya and Kids on the Slope, but it's mainly using rotoscoping for the hands in those cases. Almost nothing has used full rotoscoping techniques to this extent since Scanner Darkly, and that's a movie. The only completely rotoscope television series that's comparable I think is Amazon's Undone. And while Undone is higher budget and arguably looks better, both it and Akunohana are equally motivated for their use of rotoscoping. Because it's animated so painterly and so realistic, even the realistic scenes feel unreal, so it's always a bit questionable what's real and what's not real. Undone's look was chosen to make you question reality and sink further into the headspace of the main character, and here's no different. During SakuraCon 2014, the director described how he chose rotoscoping to make things look off on purpose, and place us into the headspace of someone who's seeing the world as ugly. That totally makes sense for the characters. 
He went on to state that if Akunohana had taken up a more traditional anime look, it wouldn't have fit the tone. And I completely agree. The redraws you'll see on DeviantArt comparing in-between shots from the actual show to their artistic masterpieces doesn't fit the kind of story Akunohana is trying to tell. I actually feel like the rotoscope look of the show works better than even what the manga decided to do. The pacing is absolutely better. The way pages were laid out in the manga was just too abrupt a lot of the time. It didn't really give you panels to breathe. Akunohana's anime adaptation elevated the source material in pretty much every conceivable way, and I liked the source material to begin with. But from sound design to performances to the visuals, I really wish we had had a season 2 with this team working on it. Sadly, being different frequently means being shot down, and Akunohana was cancelled before it got a season 2. That means a lot of the plants in the first half never got payoffs they deserved, and the best way to really finish the story is just to read the manga. But alternatively, there's a new way, and that's through watching the live-action adaptation that came out to finish off the second half. In general, it isn't nearly as well directed as the series and rushes through the material, but overall, I liked it. It's a decent way to get the rest of the story for anyone who wants to experience it. The first half of the live action movie is just the series hyper condensed. I recommend watching the series for that bit. But then if you pick up the movie, the rest is just going to be the new material, and you won't feel like you're skipping a beat. Hey, I know it's kind of rough, but at least we didn't get it as rough as Berserk fans, which I am one by the way. I really hope you'll give this series a shot. I still go back to it every now and again, and it stands head and shoulders as one of the best anime of the 2010s. This has been Go Jesus. If you like this video, consider checking out my podcast Two Gays One Episode for commentary and analysis of anime. We're currently covering each episode of Evangelion. Links in the description. Okay, bye.